Hey everyone, welcome back. This is the first video in the series on antibiotics and um, when you're learning these drugs, you're gonna see that some terms are gonna keep coming up. So things like bactericidal, narrow spectrum, empiric therapy, etc. And so in this um, kind of introduction video to antibiotics, I'm actually gonna go through all these key concepts and define everything so then you can uh, hit the ground running when you learn the different classes and the follow-up videos. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so um, here are the things that I'm going to talk about in this video. So what are the routes of administration? Uh, what do we mean by spectrum of action of antibiotics? Uh, talk about antibiotic resistance, what it means, what are the mechanisms? Then I'm going to talk about the difference between empiric versus targeted therapy, um, and then bactericidal versus bacteriostatic antibiotics. And then we're going to end the video talking about the common targets on bacteria for antibiotics. All right, so let's start with just definition. Uh, what do we mean by, when we say somebody's taking antibiotics? So the term antibiotics specifically refers to medications that are targeting bacteria. So this is different than antivirals, antifungals. So antibiotics specifically means drugs that are targeting bacteria. And uh, the main routes of administration are either local or systemic. So local means that you're putting the antibiotics or, or administering it locally to a, a focal area in the body. So these are usually ointments or creams or drops, things that you put on the skin, in the eyes and the ears. And so of course the action is gonna be local. So these have to be for um, infections where the bacteria is kind of superficial and accessible. Um, but probably the more common way that we give antibiotics is systemic, that means the antibiotic gets sort of absorbed to the entire body and goes to all the cells. And this is given either PO, which is oral or in an injection form. These are the common ways we give it. Um, so the benefit of this is that this is gonna be helpful for diffuse infections or even infections that are focal, but in the deeper area. So for example, a cellulitis, which is a skin infection, but it involves a deeper part of the skin, like in the dermis. So you can't reach it uh, with a topical antibiotics. So you have to give systemic antibiotics. But the problem with this is that also the adverse effect of these drugs can also become systemic, and that's when we're always uh, weighing the risk and benefits of uh, antibiotic use and which route that we give it, depending on the type of the infection. All right, the next term that I'm gonna define for antibiotics is their spectrum. So when we talk about a uh, spectrum of action of an antibiotic, it's basically um, the range of the different bacterial types that it can either kill or inhibit. So in other words, um, how many different types of bacteria can this antibiotic kill or inhibit. So broad range antibiotics, which in the ER, we kind of jokingly call them gorillacillin because they're very powerful. Um, they can kill a wide or broad range of different bacteria. So for example, they can kill not only gram negatives, um, but also gram positives, um, anaerobes. So these are called broad range because they can kill a whole lot of different types of bacteria. Um, and a couple of examples I've listed here, you don't need to memorize that now, but you'll see as we go through the drug classes. Um, and the problem with these is that they tend to get overused because they're very powerful. And so this can potentially breed resistance against them. And so we have to be careful not to use these um, unless they're really indicated. And the opposite of broad is obviously narrow range for spectrum of action. So this is uh, antibiotics that um, really target only a few specific bacteria that are very similar to each other. Um, so they're not gonna be helpful at killing a bunch of different bacteria. And a good example of this is penicillin, which was the original um, uh, antibiotic that was discovered. And the problem with these is that uh, they're ineffective against a lot of different microbes. So they're only really helpful for um, one or two bacteria if we know that that's the cause of the infection. All right, so the next concept I'm gonna define is resistance. So this means the bacteria is um, not going to be harmed by an antibiotic, so it's resistant to that antibiotic. And um, you can kind of categorically divide resistance into either intrinsic uh, or acquired. So when we say an intrinsic resistance, that means the bacteria is just naturally resistant because of a sort of a natural feature of the bacteria itself. The best example of this are the uh, resistance against cell wall inhibitors. So imagine this is like penicillin, so it's a cell wall inhibitor. Well, it's gonna be easier for it to kill this gram-positive bacteria because the cell wall is exposed, it's gonna be harder for it to kill this gram negative because the cell wall is surrounded uh, by an outer membrane. So there's a little bit of intrinsic resistance here in these gram negative bacteria because they naturally have an outer membrane. And then even more so, uh, mycoplasma, which is a type of bacteria that has no cell wall, well, this is gonna be completely resistant to um, penicillin, which is a cell wall inhibitor, because it doesn't care that this is a cell wall inhibitor. This doesn't even have a cell wall. It's not affected by it at all. So this is a um, bacteria that has very strong intrinsic resistance against this antibiotic. So this is an example of intrinsic resistance due to a natural feature of the bacteria, which is the cell wall. Then the other category is acquired. So that means that the bacteria originally didn't have resistance, but 
over time, um, it developed or acquired resistance through either uh, some mutation or a gene transfer from another bacteria. And there are four um, main mechanisms by which these bacteria can become resistant. Uh, so number one is decreased drug uptake. So basically it tells the antibiotic you can't get in. And so it blocks its entry into the um, bacteria. And the best example of this are porin mutations. So porins are these channels that are um, in gram negative bacteria. And so if these porins are mutated, then the drugs can't get into the cell. And so they can't um, kill the bacteria and therefore they become uh, resistant against that bacteria. The second example is drug efflux. So basically the bacteria tells the antibiotic get out. So the antibiotic can get in, but as soon as it gets in, um, these bacteria have developed uh, specific transporters that actually pumps them right back out. So if they get right back out before they can kill the bacteria, then the bacteria is resistant. The third uh, acquired resistance is modified target. So that means that the bacteria has actually changed the target of that antibiotic. So once the antibiotic gets in, it can't recognize a target, so it can't do its job and therefore um, the bacteria becomes resistant. And the best example of this and the most high yield is MRSA, so methicillin resistant Staph aureus. The reason that this Staph aureus is resistant to methicillin is because it's modified the target of methicillin, so it can't kill the bacteria. And then finally, um, the other very important, very commonly seen resistance here is a drug inactivating enzymes. So actually these bacteria have enzymes inside of them that can actually inactivate the antibiotic itself. So a common class of antibiotics are called beta lactams. So so penicillin is an example of a beta-lactam. And over time, many bacteria have developed um, beta-lactamases, which actually inactivate the beta-lactams so that it can't kill the bacteria. So these are the four main mechanisms of acquired antibiotic resistance. All right, so the next terms I'm going to define is the difference between empiric versus targeted regimen. And you're going to, again, hear about this a lot when you're learning about antibiotics. So empiric regimen means that we're treating the most likely pathogen. So we're kind of guessing. And uh, it's not a total guess. It's an educated guess because we're going based on the infection type and the patient's risk factors and based on statistics, what is the most likely bacteria that causes this and what's the most likely antibiotic that bacteria is sensitive to. And t generally, because we don't know exactly the bacteria itself, and there could be multiple different types of bacteria we have to cover for, we generally tend to use broader spectrum antibiotics here. So this is less accurate, but the benefit of this is that we can initiate treatment earlier. We don't have to wait to find out the exact cause of the infection because culturing bacteria um, takes usually at least one or two days. And so sometimes we don't wanna wait that long. So we have to start the patient on an empiric regimen. So the idea here is that we're treating the most likely um, pathogen based on the infection type. And then the other um, option, of course, is targeted regimen. So this is exact or targeted based on what the actual bacteria is. And usually we get that based on culturing the bacteria in the lab and they, they run sensitivity against different antibiotics. And they tell us, okay, this is, for example, Staph aureus, and it's sensitive to these antibiotics and resistant to these ones. And then based on that, we can select our targeted regimen. So the benefit of this one is that it's we can choose narrower spectrum antibiotics. So it's more targeted. So it's more accurate. Um, but the problem is that um, if you were to just wait to do this, you would have to initiate it later because you would have to wait to get these results back. So often what we do in um, actual clinical practice is we start with an empiric regimen and then we modify it if we can get our um, culture and sensitivities back to a targeted regimen um, as needed. All right, so the next thing we should define is the difference between bactericidal versus bacteriostatic antibiotics. So um, this is basically talking about what is the effect of the antibiotic in the bacteria. In bactericidal, the antibiotic kills the bacteria, and a good example of this are the cell wall inhibitors, because when you inhibit and you mess up the cell wall of the bacteria, basically it becomes susceptible to lysis and they lyse and die. In bacteriostatic antibiotics, um, static means that you're preventing the bacterial growth, so it is static. When it becomes static, then these bacteria become susceptible um, to the immune system's own um, cells like macrophages and lymphocytes attacking them and killing them. So it's not that the antibiotic is killing them, it's stopping their growth, but then it's allowing for the immune system to take care of them and kill them. So either way, the bacteria die, it's just the difference is incital, the antibiotic kills the bacteria, in bacteria static, it stops its growth so the immune system can take care of it. Good example of bactericidal antibiotics are the cell wall inhibitors. Good example of bacteriostatic antibiotics is most ribosome inhibitors, except for the aminoglycosides. 
Now, um, the thing is that um, this is not always so cut and dry. So uh, the same drug at different concentrations or doses, um, and also depending on the type of infection and synergy with um, other antibiotics can be either bacteriostatic or bactericidal. And it's just very limited clinical application to this. Just because an antibiotic is bacteriostatic does not mean that it's inferior to um, an antibiotic that's bactericidal. So I, I don't particularly find this distinction very useful or helpful, and I'm kind of annoyed that you have to learn about it, but it is something that you need to know for the board. Um, you need to know which antibiotics are bactericidal and which ones are bacteriostatic. So as a good kind of first pass general rule of thumb, most cell wall inhibitors are bactericidal, most ribosome inhibitors are bacteriostatic, the rest of them are a mixed bag, and we'll go through them as you learn about the different drug classes. All right, so the final thing I wanna cover here are bacterial targets. So that means what is the target on the bacteria that the antibiotic is gonna to attack to cause its action? And you really want it to have two things. Number one, it should be selective for the bacteria and not for our own human cells because we want this antibiotic to kill the bacteria, not our cells. Number two, it has to be an important target, right? It has to be something that's essential for the bacterial survival so that by um, attacking it or inhibiting it, it causes the bacteria to go away. And the, all the different uh, drug classes of antibiotics can basically be divided into um, attacking one of four different targets on the bacteria. So uh, very common ones are the ones that target the bacterial cell wall, which makes a lot of sense because bacteria have a cell wall, our cells don't, so this is a great place to attack them. The next one is the bacterial cell membrane, so just inside the cell wall. And together, by the way, the cell wall and cell membrane make up the bacterial cell envelope. And then um, the, the last two bacterial targets are inside the um, inside the bacteria, so not on the surface. So we have a class of antibiotics that uh, attack bacterial ribosomes. And again, this is another great place to attack them because bacterial ribosomes are um, 30S and 50S, which is different than eukaryotic ribosomes. So this is very selective. And then finally, inside the bacteria, they can also, there's a different class that can mess with their nucleic acids and DNA and RNA and all that stuff. And so that's the fourth category. So the main bacterial targets are gonna be cell wall inhibitors, cell membrane inhibitors, um, ribosome inhibitors, and DNA RNA inhibitors, uh, and in subsequent videos, we're going to learn about um, the mechanisms of action of these drug classes. All right, and so um, in this final slide, I'm just going to show you what we're going to be looking at when we learn about the different drug classes. So here's our antibiotics that are going to be effective against most bacteria, um, and so they're going to either uh, be targeting the cell envelope, so cell wall inhibitors, the different drug classes and different drugs here, uh, or the cell membrane inhibitors with the different drugs here, and then inside the bacteria, uh, we have either the ribosome inhibitors. Uh, these are the ones that attack the 30S ribosome. These are the ones that attack the 50S ribosome. And then we have the um, antibiotics that target bacterial DNA and RNA. And so again, in subsequent videos, we're going to go through each of these drug classes. Okay, that's it and that's all. If you want to learn more about this topic, you can check out the other videos that I've linked here. And if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and share it with others. And also um, consider subscribing to this channel so you don't miss out on upcoming content. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.